Hi, good morning, Secondary 2 Express students. I'm Mr. Xiao, and today I want to talk about the skill of message. So this is a new skill. It builds on your knowledge of inference. Uh, and at, at any point in this video, you can speed up, slow down, or pause to better understand the content of uh, the lesson. So let's start. You should have this worksheet with you. You should have a highlighter uh, and writing materials. And in this lesson, I want to teach you how to find the message of a source, uh, otherwise known as the main idea or main argument of a source. So let's begin. We begin with inference. You have learned inference last year. Inference is about using a source and finding out about a topic. We have different types of sources. We have textual sources, we have pictorial sources, we have statistical and database sources. These sources give us information. A source gives us information about the world and a historical source gives us information about the past. And we use this information to find and understand a conclusion about a topic. And so, Inferences answer to a topic, and when we answer inference questions, we look at a question focus. And I will give you an example in this page of the worksheet, so it becomes a bit more concrete. If inferences have a question focus, message dif is different because it has no question focus. The message of a source requires you to make a judgment, a judgment, about the source's main idea or argument. In other words, a message question demands that you understand a source in its totality and decide what the key argument, idea, belief, message of the source is. So let's move away from abstraction and let's move towards the concrete. Let's look at a, an actual historical source. This source is a picture of POWs, prisoners of war, right? And specifically, it's Australian prisoners of war. And they were released from Changi Prison in 1945. In other words, right, these Australian soldiers, where did they come from? They probably were survivors of the 1942 battle for Singapore. They have probably been uh, whiling their time away in a prison. Changi prison for three years. And you could imagine that as, as soldiers in 1942, they were probably young and fit and healthy. But now you look at them, they are quite bony and scrawny and they look very malnourished. What is this source telling us? So first, let's look at different types of questions. At this point, read the two questions. The first question what does Source A tell you about Japan's treatment of allied POWs, prisoners of war? The second question, what is the message of Source A? Which one is the inference question and which is the message question? Can you write it down? Pause the video and write it down. And I think you, you did write it down. I hope you did. And you realize very clearly that this is the inference question and this is the message question. Because the inference question has got a question focus. It asks you about a topic. The topic is Japan's treatment of allied prisoners of war. The message question has got no question focus. It demands a judgment. It demands that you look at the source and come in its totality and come to a conclusion. Next, which one is the harder question? Inference or message? Both questions demand some knowledge and understanding of the source. Both questions demand that you use your critical thinking skills to come to a conclusion. But whereas the inference question starts you off with the focus, the message question is unfettered, unbounded, free, and somewhat unstructured. In other words, the message question is a higher level question. It demands judgment. It demands critical understanding. It demands an awareness of the totality of the source. So, how do we get started? We get started by looking at the source 
and deciding what is its main idea. So can I ask you to pause the video and write down your thoughts? And let me briefly go through some main ideas that, that different students have written in my lesson so far. One student wrote the main idea is how the prisoners, the, the soldiers were prisoners of war, were treated by Japan. Another said the main idea was the prisoners of war were treated badly by Japan. And the third person said that the main idea is the prisoners of war were allied prisoners of war were starved and given little food. Which of these is the the best answer? Which of these would be a great answer for a message question? So firstly, between the three answers, the weakest answer, the weakest answer is the first one. If message were a five mark question, so if message were a five mark question, the first answer would achieve one mark because it has no inference. It has no message. In fact, it is just talking about a topic. So it's a bad answer. It's a bad answer. The second one, second answer, is a better answer. It gives me an argument. It will be two marks. And the third answer also has an argument, will be two marks. The second answer that they were treated badly and the third answer that they were starved, both answers have used the source to come up with an argument, with an idea. They are called a sub-message. They are called a sub-message. So, um, okay. let me just get a bit more space. So, in this case, there is no message. This is a sub-message. And this is also a sub-message. So how do I get the highest level L3? How do I get the main message? Well, in this case, we want the totality of the source. The source has two things going for it. Firstly, it's that you know that these people are hungry, are starved, are malnourished. And secondly, by being starved and malnourished, you conclude that they're treated badly. In other words, I want these two ideas at the same time. How do I do it? I use connectors. I use connectors. Like and, because. These words, and and because, are very powerful. Because they help us connect ideas. Connect ideas, join up the ideas, and then I have a full message. So my best message would be the Allied prisoners of war were treated badly. By Japan because they were starved and given little food. This this would be a formal answer. This would be a formal answer. So here I will get the main message. So again, the way message marking works is uh, with no message is one mark. With a sub-message, a sub-message means I only use part of the source, it's two marks. 
and with a main message, I get four marks. And how we craft this main message is by using all the ideas we can pick out from the source, which is why this main idea thing is important. I need to come up with ideas from the source. And why do I need to come up with ideas? Because the message question has no focus. Because the message question is unstructured and unfettered. So you have to generate the ideas. Okay. So how do we craft an actual written answer? Let's look at the writing frame. What is the message of source A? Right. The question is asking for a message. So I need to answer the question. I start with the message of source A. Is that? Is what? Yep. I use the ideas that I have gotten. That the allied prisoners of war were treated badly by Japan. Right? And we say that this is two marks. Because they were starved and given little food. And so we... But you might be asking now, Mr. Xiao, this is a five mark question. Where is the last mark? It's a source based question, so you should figure it out. The last mark is in the evidence. And for a pictorial source, the evidence is what I described from the source. So I will look at this source. I see that the soldiers here are very bony and uh, their rib cages are, sh are showing, right? So it shows me that the Australian soldiers after the war were bony, scrawny, with their rib cages showing, right? This description of the source generates the idea that they were staffed, helps us get the idea that they were treated badly. And that's it. Oh, I'm sorry. This is our three formats. I'm sorry. So this is uh, L2, L3. Oh, uh, sorry. So they will be L1, L2, L3. I, I mixed up the level. Um, okay. So in other words, the message levels are these. No message L1, sub message L2, and main message L3. And this would be uh, a full answer for the source. Take down what you need to, and then we can try the next pictorial source. Let's try this one. Here I see uh, many children who are screaming, smiling, waving their hands like this, happily. Why are they waving? I look at the source provenance. They are cheering the British troops. So... They are cheering the British troops because the occupation has ended. Right? There's a clue here. It's 1945. So I want to figure out what's the main idea or argument. What's the argument? I start answering the question. The message of source B is that. So what are some ideas you might think of? Can we pause the video and maybe you can scribble down at the side, at the side of the worksheet? what ideas you have. And I will scribble some ideas that I see. Um, okay, people are pleased and thrilled uh, about the British returning. Why are they pleased and thrilled? End of occupation. Because they hated the Japanese and think their suffering is over. So, returning to, to take over Singapore. So, I have two ideas, right? And I have my connector. So, I think everything is good. So, if you were to do this question, and you were to just write the first idea, it would be two marks. But writing two ideas is four marks. So, I have this. Four. Okay. Um, and it's a pictorial source, so I need to describe the picture, which shows me that there are children smiling and waving 
their hands happily to welcome British soldiers back. Five marks. That's it. So we are done with pictorial sources. Pictures are fairly easy. You just generate, as I said, you just generate uh, a couple ideas. Um, and then you connect them. Use words like and or because. If you have the fear that one of your ideas is wrong, you should still write it. Because we don't do negative marking. So let's say your first idea is wrong. Uh, that they are not pleased and true. But your second idea is correct. I will award the right idea. Okay. So now let's move on to textual sources. And if you need to, please pause the video to read this source. Highlight the main evidence that you want to use. I will highlight. So I think the main evidence I want, expel and punish drastically. Um, against the orders and disturb the military action. Okay, this looks like a mean evidence. In 2H5, a student asks, uh, what does this indulge themselves in private interest and wants mean? Uh, it means using the black market. This line here is a bit esoteric. Uh, the Japanese just mean that there are people who are circumventing the rationing, rationing system and using the black market to trade in the goods they, they want. And of course, the Japanese have declared the black market to be illegal. Uh, so people who indulge themselves, that is, they enjoy the usage of the black market to get what they, what they desire, the goods they desire, uh, these are uh, people breaking the law, and the Japanese army will deal with them. But the black market is not the main point here, right? I mean, the black market, yes, people are flouting the law, but the Japanese army is really interested in people who are this against the orders of the Japanese army. Who are these people? Who, are, who would be against the orders and disturbing the military action of the Japanese army? We went through a lesson on this. Right? You had to pick a side, collaborator or, or resistor. These are the resistors. The Japanese army is talking about resistors. The speech by the general in 1942, he is threatening the resistors. So again, we need to generate our ideas. We need to generate our ideas. In this case, um, our ideas are that the Japanese military forces are going to, are threatening to deal harshly and torture resistors. Because resistors are breaking the law and disrupting Japan's war efforts. Okay. I think many of you will have noticed something something that I did here. I consciously avoided using words like expel, punish, disturb, Uh, army. So even military is not really good. Japanese, mm, the Japanese, uh, Japanese armed forces, armed forces. Okay. So why do I avoid using these words? Because they're in the source. And we said that for any inference question, we can't lift from the source. Using these words will come in the evidence. So we cannot lift when we craft our inference, when we craft our message. And once you have these ideas here, uh, again, the message question is quite, quite easy because I just have to answer. The message of source C is that the Japanese forces are threatening to deal harshly and torture resistors because they are breaking the law. And then our evidence is exactly what we chose from the source.
So please write down what you need to. Please uh, do your corrections when necessary. Mm, should we do one last textual source? Okay, let's let's do it. Okay, so uh, a uh, not a, H four five six seven. Can I suggest firstly that you don't just watch the video uninterrupted. Pause the video now, and read the source, and generate ideas like what I just did for the first three examples, because. Practicing and thinking on your own first will allow you to learn. The best way to learn is through mistakes. The best way to learn is through mistakes because learning is a form of improvement of the self, cultivation of your own knowledge and skills. And you only improve when you have seen your own weaknesses and found a way to, to cover those weaknesses. If you don't even try, if you don't try on your own, if you just wait for an answer from me or from your friends or from your other teachers, you lose the opportunity to make the mistake now. Instead, you will find yourself making the mistake in the future. And in the future, the stakes may be higher. It could be an exam. And that's the part where you don't want to make a mistake. So the best chance to make mistakes and to learn are here and now in the worksheets and practices that have very little consequence in the long run, right? So can I encourage you to try and make mistakes because mistakes are the way you learn. Um, having made that pitch, I hope you also paused and read the source. I'm going to do it now. Let me get rid of this because it's more space. Okay, and I'm going to tackle this source. I've not seen it for a while since I set this worksheet. Let me look at it. What is the message of Source D? Explain your answer. An article from the Shonan Times. Shonan is the name, Japanese name for Singapore. Ever since Japan captured Singapore, it called it renamed Singapore as Shonan To. I think we know this from our chapter 6 notes. Um, an article from this Shonan Times. So Shonan Times is actually Straits Times. Uh, Straits Times renames itself to Shonan Times because the Japanese are now the rulers, right? You can't really piss them off. They have the campaign tie. Uh, and Shonan Times says, every family must have its protector to ensure safety and security for its members. In Nippon, Japan, the Asian family of nations has found a protector among themselves. They must cooperate with their only liberator, Japan, one of their own flesh and blood. Oh, wow. It's very laudatory. It's very almost bootlicking, right? It's, it's praising Japan, it's bootlicking the Japanese rulers whose bravest and best sons have suffered and died for Asians. I mean, okay, so in this version of the story, Japan has sent its military forces, its bravest and best sons to die for Asians to, to do what? To liberate Asia from the evil Western colonial powers, right? Forget the fact that most of the fighting is done in China to kill Chinese people. Um, right, we just conveniently ignore that. In this article, it's all about Japan being the brave Asian leader and big brother and protector, protector to protect the Asian family and make the splendid vision of a. Okay, there's only so much propaganda one can imbibe on a on a Saturday morning, but but you know and I know and everyone knows why the Shonan Times is writing this. Because when you have a Japanese general breathing down your neck, when you have the Japanese general writing things like drastically expel and punish, um, the news reporters at the Shonan Times really can't do anything else. Okay, it's not their fault. So what's the message? What is this article trying to say? Let's generate ideas. Let's generate ideas. And the way you do source-based questions is the way I, you are seeing me do them. Right? I'm approaching this source fresh, but I'm just highlighting the lines which I find to be important. And once I highlight those lines, it's it's much easier for me to start addressing those ideas and crafting my own thoughts and arguments. So what's going on? The ideas are what? That Japan is, is a freedom fighter, is uh, the leader of Asia that, that seeks to free other Asian countries um, by 
sacrificing by nobly sacrificing her own forces in 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 order to defend and and liberate I can use the word liberate because liberator is here in order to defend and support the her, her Asian neighbors. Okay, we have these ideas. What else? Um United Free Prosperous. Okay. And thus, thus. So by and notice that I'm just throwing in all the connectors to connect all my ideas and thus. And thus and thus create a harmonious a self-ruling rich and wealthy and wealthy and happy Asia. Wealthy and happy, fulfilled, fulfilled, happy, pleased uh, Asia. Okay. I have sidestepped all the lifting landmines, right? I've sidestepped all the lifting landmines. I have all the ideas here. What do I do? Spam them. That's it. You have spam so many ideas that, and all of them are from the source, that there's really no way I, there's no way you're you are dropping the marks, right? You've gotten all the ideas that are, can possibly be gotten from this source, all the big ideas. Oh, and we need the idea of cooperate, right? So here, maybe here, Asia needs to help and support Japan because Japan. Okay. I've already used all the connectors I can use. This is the message sheet code 2H4567. It is to it is to use the connectors and dump in all the ideas and you are and you are safe. Then I just throw in the evidence. Cooperate with Japan. Right. Our best and braver sons. United, free, prosperous, happy Asia. Do I have everything? I think I have everything. This is perfect. Super. Well done. Okay. Does that make sense? What are my steps? I'm going to write it down. My steps for message. With a textual source. One, read the source and highlight main evidence. Two, generate ideas from the source. Use connectors to join them up. And connectors here would be and by because. Uh, three, then uh, craft the message and provide evidence. So this is, um, if you want to think about it that way, this is like your formula for a textual source message. If it's a pictorial source, it's just look at the source, look at the source, and then you start generating ideas, right? These are the steps. Okay, let me finish up the last source for you. Should I? Okay, I should, right? I should. So that when you revise, you can, you can have something to do. Uh, look at. So this source, what is the message of source E? Local students. Oh, the teacher here is smiling. Um, well, these students, he looks like he's... Uh, happily learning what? Japanese? Kan kanji? No, maybe it's katakana and hiragana. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like kanji. Okay, so he's learning Japanese language, written Japanese language. What is the message? Smiling, learning. It's very positive. We're going to use positive language. So we're going to refer to our three steps. Our three steps are this. Oh dear. Okay. Look at the source. Generate ideas. Craft a message. Okay. So let's look at the source. Smiling, Japanese language, learning. Okay. Generate ideas. Um Singaporean students in Singapore. Are learning Japanese well, language well, under the Japanese, under, under teachers who are happy to be teaching them. Um, okay, is that all? I think that's, that's, a, that's a reason why the Japanese newspaper published this, right? It's trying to say something. It's trying to say that that the is it is it negative or positive? It, it is pretty positive. Smiling, right? So positive language are benefiting from the Japanese occupation because they are are learning the Japanese language well and the teachers who are happy to be teaching them. I think, have we gotten everything? Well, these two students could be from different ethnic groups. So maybe many students across different groups, races in Singapore. Yeah, I think we've gotten everything. Different races, language, happy, learning, benefiting. Yeah, we've gotten everything. Okay, this is the message. And then for evidence, describe the picture. Describe the picture. So this picture, well, we talked about it. We have, shows me that two local students of different races are practicing and learning the Japanese language on a whiteboard, a blackboard, under the tutelage of a smiling job. And we have everything. Okay. So let me reiterate. Today I've taught you about message. The message skill is to look at a source in its totality and to generate ideas, connect them, and craft out the series of ideas and arguments that the source makes. And the way we go about doing this is through the three steps of one, look at the source or read the source, highlight the evidence you need, two, generate the ideas, connect up your ideas, and three, you craft the message and get evidence from the source. Okay, that's all I have for you for today's message lesson. Uh, please keep message in mind because message will be a very important jumping, uh, jumping pad to learning about purpose, which we'll learn in the next lesson. Okay, thank you, Sactus, and have a good weekend.